Hello YouTube, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a railroad crossing. I forgot to clear out some glue from the previous attempt. So I'm just get it back. Alright, so, I've already had the, mar the area marked out, so what I'm just going to do is, I guess, start. So the module need are create immersive engineering and computer craft or CC tweet. Either one will work. You cannot use open computers on this, at least I'm not, I don't think you can, so just stick with computer craft for now. So, I already have the area marked out, so there's going to be a, a three wide path with fences on either side, so five wide, and I already have the track marked out, so let's just get started. So, we're going to start on the, um, the gates, so the things you'll need are a mechanical bearing, a adjustable chain gear shift and encased chain drive, and whatever building materials you want. So, I'm going to use sandstone stairs as well. You can use any mod you want for this. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go for a sort of village vibe, like a Plains Village vibe. So like cobblestone and oak stuff. So yes. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go two away from the farthest point on your path. And then you're just going to go four away. So four away from the track. One, two, three, four. So right here and then place a hole and then place your encased chain drive there. And then place two more on top, and then your adjustable chain gear shift. This is optional, by the way. You can just use an encased chain drive. I just like to have it in case the gates mess up, which they often do. And then you place like a sort of pedestal thing using one of your building blocks and its stir equivalent, like that. And then you place your mechanical bearing on top. Sorry if you hear like background noise or keyboard noises. I don't really have any good um, good no noise suppression, so just gonna say that now. Now what you're going to do is you're going to set this to only place when anchor destroyed. So there's your crossing gate uh, mechanism done. Now we're going to do the gate itself. Place a stairwell like this and then an another one like this. This sort of looks like a cantilever, I mean a counterweight. And then you place, uh, in this case, six. So pretty much whatever the witness of your path, including its fences, plus one. So six like that and then you're just going to glue it all together and there you go so that's one gate done now you're just going to need to do the exact same thing on the other side so one two one two three four place a hole in the ground like that and then one two chain drive or chain gear shift sorry and then mechanical bearing i've done this so many times before that it's kind of become in like muscle memory at this point so there you go and then you glue it all together so there's your gates all done now what we're going to do is we're going to do the lights and the bells or at least part of the bells but yes definitely to the lights so what you're going to do is you're going to go parallel to your gates now normally I would put these on the right but I I guess I'm doing it on the left. It doesn't really matter what direction, which side they're on, but in this case, they're on the left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get either a regular computer or an advanced computer. I use an advanced computer because it matches up the advanced monitor that we do have to use uh, because it has color. Um, you can use like, you, the, the background could be set to different colors. That's the important part. And then you put in this paste bin. I'll put all the paste bins you need in the description below. Uh, there we go, and then you just put this in, and that's all, pretty much. Now this is the light, the kind of light that um, goes yellow than red. See, and this can also be triggered from the bottom, which we will do just to make it look a little bit nicer. Now that we've done that, what you're gonna do is you're going to middle click the computer, like that, or if you're in survival mode, just place down another computer and put in the same paste bin if if for some reason you want to do this in survival. So once again on the fence line place your computer down and your monitor I somehow clear that out and you can uh, make sure you put the monitor on before you turn it on otherwise it won't work. So you can see now both are on and good. Now we're going to get the bells in. Now this one's, uh, that's why, uh, there we go. What we're gonna do is we're going to get a wired modem block, like the blocky one, the, the eight-way one. 
place it two blocks away from the gate or just along the fence line again that's pretty much all you need to do and then you place a speaker on top boom boom and then you just oops <laughs> used to computers and then you just um, right click the two and no I've not done 46 attempts on this <laughs> I've just connected way too many speakers pretty much so there you go um, oops. So that's that bit done. I'll connect them in a second using networking cable, but first let's make a hole. We're going to use World Editor for this just because it's nice and convenient. So we're going to do one, two, three, and then there, and then we just set zero. So you want a 7x7x3 seven by seven by hole, pretty much, uh, in the ground. There's the track bed. <laughs> and then we're going to get another computer. Uh, it has to be a ID less computer so just a new computer and this one I uh, again it doesn't have to be advanced but I prefer it now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in these three paste bins um, they don't have to be in order they just I'll add everything that's gonna be under the main controller bit in the description and this one, now last last attempt, uh, for some reason the pacement got deleted, so I made a new one. There we go. And that's that done. So now that we have that, now is where immersive engineering comes in. We're going to get a uh, engineer circuit table. Now if you have a way of doing this through commands, please let me know, because this is a headache every time. So you place your circuit table down, you get your any sort of power source or accumulator. I just use the creative one because it's the most convenient. Now we get a circuit backplane, a vacuum tube, and two bits of copper wire. And you just plop them in, set it to not, and set the output to orange. And that's that. Now you get a logic cabinet unit, whatever it's called. It's a unit and place it, uh, let's see, I think you want to place it right here. Yeah, right there. So just sort of, right, yeah. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a clutch and a, what is it called? It's it called a gear shift. So you get a gear shift and a clutch. You put the clutch in front of the computer and the gear shift on the right side. And actually we are gonna move this logic cabinet to right here. Uh, right there. Place your lo logic circuit in, and then place a redstone interface connector on it. And then you get your screwdriver and a redstone wire connector and coil uh, while you're out. It, while you're at it, so you get your two redstone wire connectors. Put them on top. Set the one on the clutch to orange and output, and the other one to just white and output. Then place two redstone wire connectors, one on the back of the computer and one on the right side. Connect the one on the right side to the one on top of the gear shift, and the one on the front to, or, or sorry, on the, the one on the back to the interface connector, and then the interface connector to the orange one. And if you get conflicts like that, just place another um, wire connector, and you should be fine. I do have to set it to orange, though, I think, in order for it to work. Yeah, there we go. So now that that's done, uh, we, what we're going to do now is just connect a power source. If you're using anything that isn't creative, make sure there's a speed controller in front of it and set it to 2. There we go. So now that bit's done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place two redstone links on the top and left side. And that's pretty much that bit. And then you just set them to any frequency you want as long as they are different from each other. So I'll put this one here, and this one there. Now, what we're going to do is get another computer, and this is where we connect up uh, the two uh, bells together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the bells. So right there. And this is just going to run along the uh, roof, I guess. And then you get your network cable. Just run it along the ceiling. 
at. Just have them connect in some way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get a... Just put a another one of the modem boxes. Or actually it's preferable if you just put your computer down and put a modem on top, a wired modem. I'll, I'll use the wired modem just because it looks nicer. And then boom, connect it up. Actually, what I can do is that. There we go. And then you put this paste bin in, the one under the bells section. And just restart the computer. And that's the bells done. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put the one on the top side, on the bottom, or um, or the right side, I think. No, on the on the bottom or the back side of this one, preferably the bottom. This one connects. This one is going to input to the bottom. And then you're going to take the other one, the one, oh, not that one, the one on the left side, and you're going to connect it to all the lights, which are here and here. You can either put these on the bottom or on the right side. And make sure these are all set as out as receiving. So now that they're set as receiving, at least I think they are. Yep, they are. Now what we're gonna do, make sure I think I forgot to set one of them as anchor. Yeah, there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect these two up. Now be mindful of the direction of rotation of this. So what you can do is you can just get your your screwdriver, your engineer screwdriver. Set this to some. Uh, yeah, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, just set this to any other frequency and make note of the direction this is going. So this is going clockwise. That's fine, or at least it should be. So clockwise would be uh, would mean that it's actually spinning the direction we don't want it to go. So what we're going to do is going to get a vertical gearbox, and now it's going to be spinning the other direction, which is what we want. And now we're just going to get a lot of chain drives. This is going to require quite a few, and that's an understatement. So what we're going to do is you're going to just go towards your ch little thing right there. Boom, uh, make sure it's actually doing the correct direction. And just bring it towards the gearbox I guess it's yeah so whoops and just connect it up in some fashion if we can make it look nice go ahead you don't have to though because no one's gonna see this and then you're just going to go to the other one which is over here somewhere there we go Bring it down, and now, if you've connected everything correctly, it should be done. Now what we're going to do is, which I already have, is it? so what you're going to do is you get a sequence gear shift, connect it somewhere along the chain, set down one of these, any power source will work, it doesn't really matter what speed it's at, and you're just going to t set it to 10 degrees in the direction that the crossing is facing, I guess. So, in this case, it's clockwise. Place your button down and just... There we go. And your crossing is pretty much almost done. All the base, the, all the main stuff of it is good. Now, I just realized that this is, that this computer is in a very awkward spot. So, um, I'm going to move the redstone link. I am gonna make this work, don't worry. And we're just, go what we're gonna do is we're gonna get your Redstone. If it's in a weird spot, don't worry about it. You, you'll, you'll find. Oh, I, it, you can do it. <laughs> That's all I can say. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to get a powered latch, not a toggle latch, just a latch, like that. Place two repeaters facing into it, one on the side and one on the front, and you can just place blocks. And you, what you can do is you can get redstone links, um, or you can do buttons or pretty much anything you want. So let's just get the redstone link. And we'll just set it to somewhere in a frequency that I don't use. So uh, like that. And 
there we go. Now we're going to copy them. Now this is the on, and we're just going to give it a quick test. I have a button. Uh, I have a button. So one, two. I think it's this one that activates it. Nope. It's it's. Wait, did I turn on the bells? Make sure I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we'll just start it. Oh, I pressed the wrong one again. There we go. As you can see, it goes down. The bells are in sync. That's why we use modems, so that they stay in sync. And then... I pressed the wrong one again. And then it's going to take a little bit to go up, because... Um, this has a fail safe that makes sure that it stays down when you when it's unloaded from a chunk unless you leave the game and come back then it won't work the, then the fail safe breaks i haven't figured out a way to fix that yet but the crossing works so yeah i'll just set up a trigger for it and we'll just do the old and there's this one i just check button But yeah, the crossing works fine. Make sure both lights are working. And if they are, then you can close everything up and you'll be good. Although I like to add some torches in here just to prevent lag. To be honest, I'm not even sure if it prevents lag, but I'd like to think it does. And that's literally the entire crossing done. It's way simpler than you'd think it would be. And um, now we'll just add some fences and some other stuff. So we'll just quickly do that. I'm not going to time lapse this because I don't really have the time to do that. I don't have the time to have to set it up, I guess. And also it's going to take really quickly, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to move this back a bit, but that's fine. Alright, now we just add fences. One, two. Just like this. They don't have to be that sophisticated. <laughs> they just have to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three, four. I like to go all the way back. And then one, two. And then dit, dit, dit. And there you go. Now we'll just place in a couple of signs and also put these back. Okay, that's the one that activates it, that's the one that deactivates it, I think. Just make sure I'm going to click the deactivating one, if it is the deactivating one. Yep, it is. And we'll put the same thing on the other side just for symmetry, because we like symmetry here. Deactivating, activating. And we'll put some signs in because more decoration is always nice. And some torches just to light everything up. Uh, when you place in the torches, I usually put them behind the lights and the bells like this. Now I get the sign or uh, the glow ink because I can't I can't get enough of this stuff. And we're just gonna place like you know, the X and the do not stop on tracks sign that you sometimes see at some American crossings at least. I'm not sure if you see those in Europe or any other place, but they you sometimes see them on American crossings, so and that's what this is based off of, sorta. It's kinda like a mix of a bunch of countries plus a bell that nobody uses. <laughs> but yeah, that's the crossing done. literally it <laughs> the entire crossing is done and it really didn't take that long we'll say it did take forever to write the code <laughs> but that's besides the point so once again all the pay spins will be posted in the description I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll have a good day